It's still October, which means it's still business planning month. Today, step two in the three steps to a business plan, creating your actual written business action plan. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 139. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, it's mid-October. We're, we're deep into the business plan now. Last week we did step one. We set our 2021 goals and today we are jumping right on in, right? That's right. Thanks for the setup, Matt Emerson. Well, You're welcome. Uh, I would imagine that you have been editing videos or something or or been watching our free business planning course. I am telling you over the last few weeks uh, and actually over the past few months, what have I been talking about with our whole relaunch of WBNL coaching or 3.0 and all the stuff we've been doing. We just are in the process today of, of uh, putting up our brand new intro to real estate team building course. So I've been editing those uh, videos for a long time. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm way back into knowing what our content is. <laughs> so listen, get over to WBNLcoaching.com. We do have two free courses for you. Obviously, we've been talking about business planning. So this business planning course, Matt and I recorded this five years ago, but it is evergreen, never going to change. It's great That's right. stuff. Uh, and super excited in a few weeks ago, we recorded, re-recorded our introduction to team building. As you know, if you're listening to the podcast, I, I have taken a deep dive back into walking my talk and building my own team. We're having super success with our team. I'm so jazzed because we're actually you know, putting everything that we've been coaching for years into practice. I can't tell you how excited I am having fun with that, which means that we've updated some of the content. So I think, Matt, that's going to be ready today. It is going to be ready today. You know, it's so funny. I was talking to a friend. ready today. Yeah, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine about, you know, editing these videos. He was like, he goes, hi, because it seems like, because I've been talking about it for a long time, like 10 days now, you know, editing. He goes, he goes what, what, how many videos are you editing? I said, well, it's a 12 part series, right? I said, but the total runtime is about, oh, I don't know, a little over two hours. And he said, holy crap, that's longer than a feature film. And then it made me think, huh? That's right. So this is more of an editing job than I thought it was. So thank you very well, much. Let me tell you, I love the topic of business planning, but what I love even more is the topic of building a profitable team. And uh, thanks to Mr. Matt Emerson, the wizard of editing and marketing, uh, he's made these videos very exciting and fun to watch. Well, let's not get too excited about it. They're not Oscar worthy. Come yet. on. But we are. we're learning. Friend, we're learning. Uh, has done so. You should let your your friend take a look at these and see. Wow. Let's just awesome. put it this way: we have grown over the past five years. Yes, we have. As we're approaching our fifth anniversary coming up in just a little less than a month. Oh my gosh, we are fifth That's anniversary. Right. Maybe we have to have some goodies for everybody with the fifth right. anniversary show. Like that idea. Maybe something around team building. So listen, even if you're not thinking about building a team, definitely go check out that and of course this business plan course, which I'm going to jump into and talk a little bit about the actual part of what you get in the business plan today. But even if you're not thinking about building a team, those 12 strategies, several of them do talk about things that you need to do. This is what I say in our opening welcome to that course. I basically say to you, look, if you're thinking about building a team, this little mini course is for you because by the time you're done listening to me talk about 12 key strategies, you'll be like, yeah, I'm in, this is exciting, or nope, I don't wanna do it. And if you don't wanna do it, you will have got things in there because everybody building a team needs to put basic systems in place. And one of them is business planning. Uh, so that is a huge piece that I coach to everyone. Uh, everybody I've ever coached does not have their business systems in place 100%. So we've got to work on those first. Then you start building a team and you're going to get all the keys, the main things. And we basically pulled 12 co pieces of content from our overall all team builder course, which is just packed with a lot of stuff. No, there's great stuff. information in there. I swear, I had actually forgotten how know. comprehensive it really, really, well, really. You're going to learn how to build an operations manual. We're going to give you some free things, like the free, the, the basic uh, task procedures guide that we use. 
uh, we're going to talk about how do you find the right people to work with you. So even if you're thinking about hiring assistants, some people are like, I don't want to build a team, but you know what? If you want to double or triple your income this right. next year as you're doing your business planning, you've got to hire an assistant. If you're closing at least two transactions a month, you need an assistant or you need to leverage the transaction coordinator in your company, which I'm sure you're already doing, unless you're a very, oh, what's the word? controller <laughs> and nobody touches your file but it's not the best use highest and best use of your time i use tc just took a listing i, I emailed her last night need your help she's going to take do all the uploading and handle all kinds of stuff that an assistant does and it only cost me 200 dollars when it closes so anyway let's practically talk. free it is practically free it is free you're worth more than you know no. you, you, you can use the the hours of time that you that she will do for me I can put into other things that are going to generate income and that's what you're listening to the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet join us and subscribe on apple Podcasts, stitcher spotify iHeartRadio, google play and now on youtube get back to step two in the three easy steps okay so the there was actually a pre-step if you go back a couple episodes ago we talked about reviewing your year please do not miss that part you've got to go back and review your year we have a document you can download from two episodes ago that will help you gather your numbers and take a look at where your business come from what worked what didn't work you have to know where you've been so you can figure out where you want to go right, right. and what you're going to change and that's what we talked about last week we talked about goals writing smart goals in all areas of your life great content in there and in our free business planning course you get to download an entire package around goals okay I'm really jumping into this, but Matt and I are working on it. Cosmo and I and our team are about to do the same thing and put our business plan together for the new year. And I'm individually setting up meetings with my team members right now because it is October and it is business planning month. Oh. So in the doc, uh, step two is the actual writing of the business plan. Now, you don't have to actually go write a business plan and go to the small business association. We basically created a auto calculating spreadsheet now i know when i say spreadsheet excel people are like shut down immediately Freak out. this is super easy to use would you would you agree matt i mean Absolutely. we've we've done the auto calculating you basically just have to go through and set up it's hard on the podcast to describe what you're going to get so if you go over to the show notes you'll have some images of what you're going to get and then of course you just go sign up for the course and you'll have immediate access to the training we walk through in the videos these spreadsheets and I actually show you in a tutorial how to complete them. Right. So that's what I, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to tell you it's going to help you. What are your goals? How many transactions do you want to, how much money do you want to make? Then that'll break it down into transactions based on your variables. And then the rest of the spreadsheet takes it in. And this is where I want to spend a little bit of time today. And it takes it and breaks it into your target markets. And then the strategies of what are you going to do in your target markets? Yeah. Uh, that's the most important thing. It's super easy to say, well, I want to make 150 grand and my sales price is X. <clears throat> my commission structure is this. That means I need to do this many transactions. Okay. That's what some people will do and they'll stop. But well, most people do that and stop. <clears throat> they don't even caught that by most brokers because they think they give you, they're giving you a plan. Yeah. But it's not a plan. Those are your goals. Yeah. So now you have to take it and make it an action plan. So that's what right. I want to focus on today. So, and I'm going to give you th some key ideas here about only choosing three things to work on. And I'm going to give you maybe some ideas of strategies and a couple of these things to do. Cause when I teach this course, this class uh, in a workshop or in, in the training, we walk through strategies. I mean, cause everybody wants to know, okay, great. If I'm going to have 10 transactions from my database, what do I have to do? Well, I'm going to give you some ideas today. Um, so it goes all the way through that into marketing, a marketing calendar. And the last tab of this spreadsheet, a lot of clients that uh, will tell me that this is their favorite part because it's the part where you post and put your listings and your pendings and you keep track of it. So at the end of the year, when it's time to do that re re that review uh, of your previous year, your, doc your, your stuff's all there. So you have all of your clients, you have all your numbers, you have all the sources of business and you can analyze that. So that's what we love about our spreadsheet. That's the eight tab. And if that is too overwhelming for you, we've included a simple version. It's the version that we tell our team leaders to use with their team members. And it's a simple three tab where you just basically go, I want to make uh, 200 grand. Um, here's, I want this much to come from listings, you know, like 60 from listings, 40 for sale. It's, and it starts calculating what's your average sales price, list price, 
what's your average commission in your area? What's your commission split? Are there any fees that come out of your commission for your broker? It does all that work for you. You just have to pop the numbers in and it calculates for you. Then it breaks it down into how many transactions you need to do based on your percentage of closing. Then it takes it over to how many presentations do you need to do to hit those goals using like a three to one ratio, a two to one ratio for buyers, maybe in a three to one for sellers. So then it helps you know how many presentations you need to go on. That's the next important thing to do. And then the third tab is going to help you get over there and go, how many connections do you need to make in this target market to get 25 presentations? Right. And that is a serious business action plan, helping you break down. That's not even enough, though. That's all. That's the numbers. So the, the critical piece is to then say, what are the strategies? What are the connections that you're going to make? How are you going to make those calls and when are you going to do it? So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, what the actual you, prospecting you mean? Say again? The actual prospecting? Yeah. Yeah. I like to call it business building, lead generating, attracting business. Yes, we're going to talk about that. There are some additional planning resources in today's show notes over at uh, wbnlpodcast.com. 139, right, Matt? 139. That's so stuff we wrote a long time ago i have a blog i've had out there forever at generalbrian.com it's going to take you over there because that's where these documents are housed but actually we're going to put them in the free if you want them today you can get them today but they're also going to be in the free business planning cl class one of them is just called allocating time to build your business it's a cool eye opener exercise that i'll do in my workshops that will show you how much time you're wasting okay number one um there's a really cool simple daily work plan just to help you if you aren't using some kind of a calendar schedule or whatever. And then um, a little piece on attitude, affirmations, and time management. Okay, just an article that we wrote a while ago. Okay, so there's some extra bonus stuff for you. So let's just talk about Jan's philosophy and what I coach and what I try to live by is t in your business is to not be all things to all people. You've heard me say this before. And if you say are the type of real estate agent says, well, I'm going to do online marketing and then I'm going to do social media. And I'm going to be the next Instagram influencer. And then I'm going to work with Spires and Fizbos. And okay, no. When you're new, when we teach new agents, we we teach them to go try all those different. Yeah, you got to find your niche, right? You can find your niche, right? So see what you like. See if you're. You won't know until you try. Maybe you're going to be great at knocking on doors. And you know what? If you are, you're going to do great because a lot of people don't like to do that. <laughs> okay, you're going to kill it. You know, if you're if you're cool with that. Uh, networking, whatever it's going to be. So I always tell people the power of three. I'm going to give you one because everybody already has one, and it is your database or database, whatever way you prefer to call it. I think I switched to database. I say database more than database. It's an inside joke here at WBNL Coaching because uh, our good friend David Squire is a data is a database, and I've been a database person. Okay, have you seen that commercial for Uber Eats with Mark Hamill and Patrick Seward? Oh my gosh, I love that commercial. And no tomatoes. Tomatoes. <laughs> Patrick Sorry, <Seward>. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about the other one where he goes, I am my you father. Like cheese oh, with that wine. <laughs> oh, you want some cheese with All right, that right. wine? I didn't mean to get us off track. <laughs> that is an excellent series of commercials. It is. But all right. Wow. We Apologies. Can all I lost my train of thought now. Power database, three. database. You're on database. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Patrick Stewart. And no tomatoes. Okay, Mark Hamill. I am clearly a Patrick Stewart person because I'm a database person. Oh and I'm sure he calls it data. Mm. Except he did call his guy data. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. There we go. All Andre, right. Now we're, now we're spiraling out of control. <laughs> I so apologize. All the Trekkie fans are, <laughs> and Star Wars fans are with us, though. So that's awesome. Oh, boy. So you have a database. And uh, because that's what everybody, uh, everyone tells me when they work with them. It's like, where'd your business come from? Well, it's people I know. It's my database. It's Sussy. Uh, sphere of influence. It's my past clients. It's referrals. Awesome. So you have that. I'm going to come back and give you some three or four strategies today that you should be doing right now to stay in touch with those people and generate business. That's what we're doing on our team. You probably have heard these before, but I'm going to tell them to you again because they work. It's not right. like there's new stuff. There is no Always new worth repeating. There's no new magic pill, kids. You just have to go to work. Okay. You just have to stay. Look, you have to connect with people and show value. Connect, show value, connect, show value. End of story. Now I want you to find two more things, two more target markets, niches. Let me give you some ideas. 
Number one, pick a demographic. Pick a type of person that you want to work with because you have something in common with them. Right. Veteran. I'm a veteran. I like working with veterans. You could build an entire niche, 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 niche. And no, I'm getting into that niche. I'm just going to go with niche. No tomato. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, you know, say, get into something like that. Maybe you love to work with seniors, 55 plus communities. You want to specialize in that and that type of group. And that's also a type of property. Maybe it's first time home buyers. Maybe it's, if you speak a different language, you get the idea. It's a demographic, a type of person. Next is a type of property. Maybe you want to be a luxury person, a high rise. Uh, condos or townhomes are going to be your niche, niche. If you're listening from around the country, it could be or here, golf course properties. It could be water horse properties, properties, farms, horse properties, you know, because maybe you are into horses, you know, you get the idea here, but you, you need to be passionate about it because if you really become the expert in this niche, then you're going to be all the time learning about it and you're going to know the numbers. You're going to be able to just talk to anybody about it and you're going to come from passion with it and they're going to connect with you. So you get it. There's other ideas here geographic areas of town maybe you're going to be in vegas here we have summerlin you could become the mountain's edge specialist and you just want to work in the southwest and you know everything. or boulder boulder city oh my god i remember our guest that yeah. um talked about that yeah, that yeah. was awesome exactly and now you become the community expert as well as the you understand the housing area of town so that's what i mean by that it could also be strategies of a niche for the way you prospect so it could be door knocking or calling, or it could be FISBOs or expires. It could be distressed properties. You could get into it. So that one's going to grow, but it's only 1% of the market in, across the nation right now. But maybe you want to get into that. Uh, maybe you want to work with investors. So you get the idea here. But the point is you don't pick all of those. You pick something that you're totally into and you're going to be having so much fun learning about it and becoming the expert. Uh, there's so many niches. Uh, you could be a divorce specialist. You know, you could be a probate specialist. These are unique types of properties and, and, and so on. So you get the idea. So pick two, right? And you might say, I really just going to use, I'm going to be now social media. When I talk about social media, you could choose online lead generation as an example, as, you, as one of the areas that you're going to put all your energy into. But I think overall, you've got to have some social media. So social media is going to be a strategy in any of those. Right. Okay? So I, I don't have a problem with you saying, you know, for me, oh, open houses. Like, you know, it's funny because open houses, I'm actually doing an open house on a new listing this weekend. And we can now finally, last weekend was the first time we could do open houses again with restrictions. So uh, I should post something. I'm actually going to give you the picture to put in here today about open houses if you'll just do it for me, okay? Sweetly. We'll put a niche idea of, of, of open houses as one. And my sellers put in the breezeway into their courtyard, into their entryway, a little COVID table. And on the COVID table are masks, gloves, and hand sanitizer. Sweet. And a placard that came from the governor's office that you must display about safety. Anybody coming in must wear a mask, blah, blah, blah. It's very cool. Um, but open houses would be one. So somebody might say to me, I'm going to do my database, stay in touch with my clients. I'm going to do open houses. And, you know, I'm going to focus on working with 55 plus. Okay, cool. Now we can dive in and get into some serious strategies in each of those areas. And I'm not saying that you don't go try something else and so on. But if you just choose three, so I generally say three is a magic number, but don't do more than five areas because you're spreading yourself too thin. There's only so right. much time in the day and you have to be consistent with your touches, with your connections. So let's talk about a few things in each of those give you some ideas and we'll just we'll just focus on the on your database because everybody has this in common and then i'll give you some ideas around any of the other ones that you do uh some ideas of things that you can do to stay in touch with them so number one with your database is you got to have a crm right and you got to put the people in the crm and huh. you need to make at least four phone calls make at least four connections via a phone conversation or even a text message or a video text four times a year that's basic 101 with your database so many people don't even talk to people in their database. It's crazy. Then when I finally get them to do it, they find out that somebody, you know, already bought a house or sold a house because they, they hadn't heard from you. Um, I The next strategy, a monthly hyper-local community business supporting newsletter. Um, you hear me talk about this all the time. I just did our latest newsletter. It really makes a difference. My people on my team have right. given me the feedback that this is something they've always wanted to do and they don't 
they, did, they don't do it. So as a team leader, it's something that we offer. If you're a team, you may think of doing this. You could have an assistant help or create the content. I personally create the content because I want to record a video and talk about what's happening in the market. Um, it doesn't take long. It takes me about 30 minutes a month to create this. Maybe another 30 minutes to get it uploaded and to YouTube and all that. And then, well, it's well uh, worth the time because it does yeah. work. Right? Yeah. So a hyper-local newsletter is just something where you're not going and in, in getting someone else's newsletter about recipes. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about here's a local business that we support. They're offering you a deal because you're our valued clients. Here's the market update. A little, you know, there's always a listing. Here's a featured listing. There might be, I use Keeping Current Matters, so I highly recommend that to get great information and infographics and, and data. I always put an article in there. Uh, that is what, it's what people want to know. It's what's happening in the economy, jobs. How is that impacting housing? We do that once a month. Okay, so the other things around database are, are client appreciation events. Just simple connections like reaching out on people's birthdays, their home anniversaries, doing an annual home market analysis of their home. These are all things, uh, client appreciation things that we do. Once we can get back doing events, we would hold events again, but you can hold them virtually. You can set sure. up stuff and workshops and so forth for your database, but you just need to stay connected. And last idea for your, for your database is gonna be to, um, if they own a home, put them on some type of a monthly report. And most people have something through their local MLS that's called e-property watch. I, I generally see that most people have this is through CoreLogic, but you can get it if you don't have it, or maybe you have something through your CRM solution that can give people a monthly update on what's happening in their neighborhood. Now, this is not, there's a value range. It is not a CMA and your languaging has to be, hey, Matt, if you, here's what's happening in your neighborhood. Everybody wants to know what's happened with the house down the street. And unfortunately they all go to Zillow. So you're trying to get them to let you become the trusted source of information. And then the message has to say, hey, Matt, if you really are thinking of selling your home, please reach out to me because this is a, uh, this is comparing everything in your neighborhood. And I really need to be able to talk to you and give you an accurate valuation based on, you know, what would happen if we put the house on the market today. So you could do simple things like this just to stay in touch with your database and then start having some more community and, you know, fun things that you do when we're all able to actually gather together again. <laughs> All right. So as far as other ideas, every one of those other niches, I will just say that there has to be some consistency and some type of a touch. So they need to have it depending on what it is. If I was talking, there's a campaign for every type of a, a touch, yep. but for the most part, anybody that's in our lead system is getting that monthly newsletter. Anybody that owns a home is getting the uh, e-property watch. Anybody who's interested in purchasing properties because they're in our system is getting alerts about homes that they're interested in. And then for your other niches, you just are going to send them information and try to connect with them three to four times a year. That's it. I mean, there's not really any rocket science to this. There's other things you have to do to generate the leads and we don't have time to get into that today. So if you were going to work expires, we would get into a whole way well, how do you go find expires and what do you do then? How do you put them into your follow-up? Everything is a system. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that today and tell you that we have a lot more uh, content on how to, um, you know, how to even hold an effective open house as an example. You just don't right. go put some signs up. There's all these strategies that you can do so you can generate more clients because open houses is a niche that you're gonna do. And you're gonna hold a lot of, you know, open houses as, the, as one of the lead generation strategies that you're gonna do. But if you do it effectively, you can um, generate a lot of interest. You can use social media. You can, we're running an ad for the one I'm doing. This weekend, uh, we're doing all kinds of things to to let people know uh, we're having an open house and and then we'll have a follow-up system for them, okay? So that's all I wanna talk about today. Next week, we're gonna get into tracking and measuring your results. So once you have this action plan, we're gonna talk about and sh share with you the tools that we have for you to build a budget, keep a monthly P&L, you know, profit loss, or just simple income revenue so you don't have to do that at the end of the year maybe i'll do that this year i always procrastinate about the finances um and uh, we'll get into other ways that you can sort of track your results and do quarterly reviews and make sure you're on track and that'll do it for business planning um the physical business planning we have a couple other things to share with you by the end of october to keep you on track and ready for a great 2021 good stuff you're listening to the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, 
iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, that's a wrap of episode 139 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meets all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Don't forget to head over there and download the free business planning course. You are going to want to download all those documents that you can use that will help you through the process. And while you're there, uh, check out our new Introduction to Team Builder course. It rocks, I have to say, if I do say so myself. So, Jen O'Brien, good stuff. As always, I have to say, I have to go back to our digression into that commercial. What is it with commercials and us? Because it was probably about nine months ago that we were talking about Smart Pack. I knew you were going to say Smart Pack. That one kind of died out. I haven't seen Smart I don't know. I saw it the other day. Somehow it showed back up on my Facebook page and it made, made me a <laughs> He's got Smart Pack! <laughs> Oh, I love it. And what are you going to say? What are you going to do? Hey, Dan Ryan, you're home back in Vegas. Back in Vegas, but I'm watching um, my future potential home area of Tampa is is in the baseball playoffs. How about that, Tampa? What's Unfortunately, up? my Vegas Golden Knights back here did not make it, but Tampa is the hockey uh, Stanley Cup champs, and they're in the playoff. I mean, they're in the uh American League playoff right now. Hopefully they're going to beat the Astros. So I'm cheering for Tampa. You are you? Do you watch any baseball? I know you like baseball, but not. Yeah, Brian. I'll I'll watch any sports if I have to, but no. <laughs> if, I, if I have to, I'm a, no. always fun. I enjoy it. I'm, so a thing. Baseball, but no. I'm a thing. Not even in a finals scenario. No, I'm a thing. It's kind of exciting. I haven't watched any of the baseball except for right now. So I'm pulling for the Braves, the Atlanta Braves, playing the Dodgers, LA Dodgers, and they're ahead. And then Tampa beat Houston, and I hope it's Tampa versus Atlanta. And I don't know who, I'll be happy to be the one. So there, that's our sports part of the podcast. There you go. Sports fans out there. WB and LESPN. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week for the final step of your real estate business plan. Do go over there and get that. Don't take, take your business serious this year. Even if you don't get through all the videos, they're there if you need them as tutorials, but go grab the content and and sit down and, and take a little, take, carve out a couple hours for yourself this month and get serious about your finishing the year strong and having an amazing 2021, because it's going to be an amazing 2021. I concur. So, all right, everyone, get up, get out, mask up, and vote, and vote. be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm -hmm.